Hey guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you 20 things that you can do when you're bored. The best part is that all of these ideas are things that you can do for free from your phone or laptop. We have a lot to get through today, so let's just get into it. Alright, so if you're watching this around the time that it's being posted, which is in March 2020, um, people are kind of freaking out about cleaning things right now, and I know your phone's dirty, I know you just bought some Clorox wipes, so here you go. This will kill at least 10 minutes. Not gonna lie, my phone was actually really gross, but it's all good now. And I got this new pop socket with lip gloss in it, which, come to think of it, probably isn't the best idea if we're gonna be worrying about germs, but uh, yeah, moving on. Something else that you can do is to rearrange the apps on your phone. I had these organized at one point, but whenever I get a new app, it just kind of sits there by itself. And since now I have three things that print stuff from your phone, I figured it was time to make it its own folder. And if you're really bored, you can go and do this for your iPad if you have one of those. And while you're at it, you might as well change your background. I actually do this all the time. I'll go on Pinterest and look up iPhone wallpapers and save all the ones that I like. And once you find the one that you want, you can click the three dots and then click download image. Go to your settings, click wallpaper, choose new wallpaper, Find your image in your photo library, set, and there you go. I have a bunch of wallpapers saved to a secret Pinterest board, so I don't have to waste the storage on my phone. If you can't find any wallpaper you like on Pinterest, it's pretty easy to make your own. Download the PixArt app, click the plus button at the bottom, then scroll down to Collages. Select the one you want, I chose Freestyle. It makes you add an image from your camera roll, so I just chose a random one to delete later. Go to Layout, Ratio, and select the Instagram Story option. Pick a color for the background and delete the image from your camera roll if you want. Then go to Stickers, where you can find tons of PNG images to decorate your background with. I won't bore you with me arranging everything, but here's what I eventually came up with. And if you want this exact wallpaper, I'll put it on my website so you can download it. And while you're still on your phone, you might as well go and delete any old photos or notes or emails or anything like that that you need to get rid of. Now would also be a good time to clean up your social media. Go through your Instagram and delete anything that you don't want on there. You know, just unfollow people that annoy you or people that deleted their accounts like three years ago, organize your Pinterest boards, all that fun stuff. Another thing that I always do when I'm bored is to go on Amazon and add things to my wish list. I've been seeing a bunch of people making videos about their favorite things that they bought on Amazon, and I feel like that would honestly be kind of a fun thing to do. I mean, I buy pretty much everything on Amazon. Let me know if you got anything cool from Amazon lately. Maybe I can add it to my list. I just thought of this and it's actually so helpful because I can never think of what hashtags to use. Go into your notes app, make a new folder, and make a note for each category of things that you post on Instagram. I mostly put like things related to art and crafts, so those are the two categories that I used. Go through and write down the hashtags that you use all the time so that you can go back to the note whenever you're trying to write a caption. I had this as a page in my bullet journal that I did earlier this year, but let's be real, it is way more convenient to have it on your phone. One of my favorite things to do when I'm bored is to play Animal Crossing. This game is actually so addicting and I honestly try not to play it anymore because it's kind of distracting. It is completely free, there is no subscription or anything like that. It's pretty similar to the DS version that I had growing up, except in this one you can like shake the trees and you don't have to worry about going into anaphylactic shock, so it's great. And a little hack that I like to do is to shake the fruit off of the trees and then just kind of leave it there so that I can grow more but I don't have to carry it because just download the game. I promise. It's fun. And if your whole family's bored, you could play Heads Up. That's another one of my favorite games. Comment down below what's your favorite game on the App Store or really just what's your favorite app in general. Idea number 10 is to take a BuzzFeed quiz. This is the perfect thing to do when you're just bored because you can learn a lot about yourself. Like apparently I'm between 25 and 35, which I'm not, but it's fine. Idea number 11 is to download this app called Tubi. And this app, it's pretty much Netflix, but it's free. And I low-key found more that I wanted to watch on here than I found on Netflix. There are a few ads on it, but it's not that much. And the things on here that I've actually seen and would recommend are Harriet the Spy, Good Burger, Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, Legally Blonde, 
Heathers, Kitchen Nightmares, they even have all those like Shirley Temple movies from the infomercials. So if you run out of stuff to watch on YouTube, you know, 10 out of 10 would recommend this. Idea number 12 is to make a TikTok. And I feel like that's an obvious one. I kind of have mixed feelings on TikTok. Like on the one hand, it's kind of fun, but on the other hand, like it was better when it was musically. They, TikTok definitely spies on you and they don't really have the best content filter. So sometimes you can see like stuff that's kind of, you know, didn't really need to see that, but thanks TikTok. Another thing you can do is make a paint by number. Go to pbnfi.com and upload any image you'd like. This works best with images that are clear and have a good contrast, like this picture that I took of a daffodil. Once your image loads, use the color picker tools to select different colors in the image. The more colors you pick, the more detailed your painting will be, but it also means that your painting will take longer because you'll need to mix more colors, and you guys know I really hate mixing paint, so I found that between 10 to 15 colors work the best. Once you have all of your colors picked out, click the PBNify button and you'll have your own custom paint by number. This will give you three pages to print, a filled reference image, the outline, and a color palette. I printed the reference and the color palette on normal printer paper, but I printed the actual paint by number on cardstock paper, since I figured that the thicker paper would kind of hold the paint better. And after you print it out, just grab your paints and get to work. If you don't have paint, you could also use markers, but you might be able to see the numbers through the markers. I used my set of 60 Arteza acrylic paints to fill it in. Before I started painting, I picked out all of the paint colors that I wanted to use, and wrote their names down beside the color on the reference sheet. This whole thing took me about two hours from start to finish, and the end result didn't seem detailed enough to me, so I looked at the original reference photo, got out my Posca pens, and tried to make the flower pop out a bit more. You can use any photo that you have for this, whether it's one that you took yourself, or one that you found online. This was from a picture that I took of our garden a few years ago. Another easy craft to try when you're bored is to make a poster on blockposter.com. This website lets you upload any image you'd like and split it up so you can print it on multiple pages. They have some really cool examples on their website. People have made life-size cardboard cutouts, photo booths, wall art, decorated their ceiling, made wallpaper. I really like this one that it looks like somebody put it on their closet doors. Go to create your poster and upload an image. I found this butterfly poster that kind of reminded me of something that you'd find at Urban Outfitters. You can customize it to take up as many pages and be as big as you'd like. I like that they tell you how big the finished piece will be. I just made mine four pages as an example and downloaded the PDF to print out. They do have this watermark at the bottom, which is kind of annoying, but I'm sure if you're a little more tech savvy than I am, you could figure out a way to remove that or, you know, just like cut it off after you print it. The rest is pretty straightforward. Just follow the instructions on the website, print out the PDF, and cut off the white border on each page. Put the pages together and use scotch tape on both sides to attach them. I saw this hack on Pinterest for hanging posters and I really wanted to try it, so I thought I'd include it in this video. Take four paper clips and stick them to the wall with masking tape where you want the corners of the poster to go. Then use some mini magnets to attach your poster to the wall. Obviously, you can just hang it with tape, but I thought that this was a good idea if you don't want to rip the poster or put pinholes in your wall. Something else you can do when you're bored is to make origami. I made this card thing from a printable, and I made these trading cards a long time ago that have the origami on the front and the instructions on the back. I've also made origami boxes. There's actually quite a few things that you can do with just a random piece of printer paper. And if you don't have printer paper, you could also use post-it notes if you have those. Another thing I like to do is make a YouTube playlist to watch later. Obviously, I have a ton of playlists on my channel like sketchbook ideas, DIY room decor, and stuff like that. But some other playlists you could make are hair tutorials, makeup tutorials, workouts, drawing tutorials, and crafts that you want to try. I know that a lot of people are working or doing school from home right now, and you might as well change your desktop background if you're staring at it all day anyways. I made my new wallpaper in Canva. They have a bunch of different templates that you can use, and I chose the desktop background, which if you want to use a different editor, the dimensions for this were 1920 by 1080. I started with one of their pre-made templates and rearranged things to make it my own. That's something that I really like about Canva, 
is that they have all these different designs so that you have sort of a jumping off point, but you can change the colors and the size and all that fun stuff. This design had Polaroids, so I made the Polaroids sort of like sections to separate all my folders into. So I made a YouTube section, a blog section, a business document section, and a stuff that I'm currently working on section. If you have a YouTube channel, this would be the perfect time to go through the songs in the YouTube audio library and pick out songs that would work for your videos. I usually don't put music in my videos because it's kind of a hassle and if it's not in the YouTube library, I'm not risking it because your girl really does not need a copyright strike. Here are the songs that I downloaded while I was looking around. And since we're all stuck at home, we might as well reorganize some things. Once you're done organizing, you can make labels to print out so you'll know where you put everything. I made my labels in Canva again and put them in a Word document before printing them out. Make sure to measure the spot where you want your label to go so that you make it the right size. And finally, idea number 20 is to make your own stickers. All you need is some packing tape, parchment or wax paper, and an image that you've either printed out or drawn. Put a piece of tape down on your parchment paper, place your image on top, and put another piece of tape over it. Peel the whole thing off of the parchment paper and cut off any excess tape. You can use your sticker right away or store it on a piece of parchment for later. I turned my labels into stickers. You can make the stickers bigger too. Just use multiple pieces of tape. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much. Stay healthy, and I will see you guys later. Bye!